Hello everyone, my name is Greg and I dev stuff. Welcome everyone to episode 29 of JRPG tutorial. In this episode we will implement rudimental AI in the combat. Before we begin, big thanks to all my Patreon supporters. If you want to support further, link to my Patreon in the description. As always we will start episode by clicking our root folder. Good. Right now if you engage the combat you will be able to command the enemies when it is their turn to act. We need to change this to allow enemies to be, well, enemies of the player. They should act on their own accord. We will be implementing a very simple rudimental AI in this episode, where enemies will simply keep attacking the player. We might come back to this later to implement more advanced decision making system. Let's introduce an AI to our enemy combat object. Create another new script called AI Agent to enemy combat prefab. We want to make our AI to make a decision for us. Right now if we play the game, when it is a time for the character to act, he selects the ability out of ability panel. And then after selecting the ability, ability panel will return the ability ID when selected. Rather than showing the ability panel, we want to request AI to make a decision. In the AI agent create a new public method called selectability, which will return an int which will represent the ID of selected ability. Inside uh, let's simply return 0, which will mean that our AI will always choose to use first ability in the list. In the combat loop update, where we check for awaiting action, create and call a new method called process AI agent. Inside, check is the one who is awaiting an action has an AI agent. If it doesn't have one, that means it is a player character. So just return out of the process AI agent. Inside process AI agent, call selectability from the AI agent and store the ability ID into the variable. Good, now we need to select targets for the ability our AI has selected. Let's create a new public method inside the AI agent called select targets which will return the list of targets as combat characters. And we'll accept those parameters. Ability, caster as combat character and combat loop. So we can access the list of enemies and allies in the combat. Making the AI agent aware where is he acting so he can make an informed decision. Now we use received ability to identify what spell target area you have 
and then build list of targets based on its state. Use switch for this. First go spell target area single. Simply go through all allies. Check are they dead or not. Add the target to the list. Then go row. Add all allies to the target. Full map, add all combat character to the target list. Yourself, well just add uh, the caster and return him as target. Now we hit an issue of how I designed ability controller. Right now we store the targets and caster on the ability controller itself. But what we want to do is to tell to the ability controller that uh, here, here is the caster, here is the ability and here it's targets. Do it, no question asked. We want to feed it with data and it should execute the ability. So let's override the execute method and make it accept ability, caster and targets as a parameter. Check them with guard clauses. Then do similar thing as in normal execute, but using the past parameter instead of the local variables.
and let's just simply call the new execute out of old execute passing the local variables as the parameters. So to explain this, we will use public execute with parameters to force someone in the combat to do certain ability. Uh, if for example his decision was made by an AI, while local execute will be used for making an execution based on the player decision. Then call this new method in the combat loop. we have an issue now. You see you need to make sure that when you are trying to process an AI agent, there must be someone to be, you know, being processed. So let's just add an exit clause if there is no one in the awaiting action queue in our process AI. Let's test this. Good. In the future you might want to come back to this and expand an AI with stuff like role or more advanced tar targeting decision making. Good. This is it for this episode. If you have any questions or any ideas about code, please leave your comment below. If you are interested in seeing what will come out of this, please subscribe. If you want to support further, you can find my Patreon in the description. With best regards, see you in the next episode.